Hi there, I'm Nathan Hawthorne, an artist, comic creator and secondary school teacher from London and today I'm going to be teaching you about pencils. Now this may seem a bit random at first, but if there's one thing that I've learned over the years is that the more you understand your materials, how they work and what they're made of, the better you can use them. And that applies for both physical and digital materials. So today let's talk about the pencil. Now your standard pencils are made of graphite. Graphite is a form of carbon, which you science students will know is the same stuff that makes up diamonds, and also the same stuff that makes up around 18% of you. That's right, us humans share similarities with both diamonds and pencils. So, if you have a piece of paper just like this, you'll notice that it feels relatively smooth, but the truth is that it isn't. It's made up of loads of overlapping fibres that form lots of little grooves and bumps and indents that is perfect for your pencil. You see, our pencil tip consists of these tiny sheets of graphite and when you drag it over the overlapping fibres in the paper, just like this, little bits break off and attach themselves to the paper in these grooves. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because if you have a softer pencil, you'll end up with more bits breaking off and attaching themselves to the paper so you'll get a darker mark. It also means that if you press really hard, you're going to flatten out these grooves and indent the page. This makes it much harder to work with and also makes your marks tougher to rub out. Now when I go on to explain rubbers in a few minutes, then you'll understand how exactly that works. So, pencils can be categorized in a few ways. Now if you look at the base of your pencil, you'll see that it probably has letters or numbers there. So for example this is a HB, the standard type of pencil that we use for school, at home and at work every day. Now the H stands for hard but the B stands for black. So when we start going up the scale of darker pencils, so that will be B, 2B, 3B all the way through to 9B or higher, then we get darker pencils due to the softer lead. Now I know that before I said that pencil lead is made from graphite but it's actually got some other stuff mixed in with it. So clay is the main other thing that's mixed in with it and what you'll find is that the more clay that there is in the pencil the harder it becomes. So this means that we then have this other scale of H pencils so H2, H3, H and so on. Now these are harder and therefore produce a lighter mark, less breaks off. So that's the basics of how pencils work and what the different pencils mean. So now let's take a look at rubbers or erasers as some other countries like to call them. So learning how rubbers work is important because I've seen several students make a complete mess of their work because they don't fully understand the properties of this tool. A rubber is made out of petroleum compounds. Um, how and which ones, those aren't important, but the attributes of them are. So simply put, a rubber is adhesive or sticky um, and this is significant because it's stickier than paper so when you come along and rubber mistake out you disrupt all the fibers in the paper shaking it up and moving all the graphite around you also heat up the molecules in the graphite which cause a bit of movement as well so now that the graphite is no longer lodged in the grooves in the paper because you've rubbed it and moved them all around it's free to resettle so some parts will reattach themselves to the paper but most will attach themselves to the much more sticky rubber. This is where I now tell you some of the warnings that might save a few of your piece of work or improve the way that you do work. So when it comes to rubbers, never forget that your paper is made up of lots of fibres and grooves. So if you mark too hard on your paper, you can't disrupt those grooves with your rubber because there aren't any. So the graphite won't necessarily come up. It means that your rubber will just slide across and if it takes off anything it's just a superficial layer and most of the graphite will stay on that page. So this makes your work look both ugly and it also makes it very hard for you to draw back on top of that area as well. Also if you rub away too much with your rubber two things can happen. Either so much of the rubber breaks off that it begins to actually clog up the paper in the same way that your graphite normally does. So this means that when you do try to draw, your graphite doesn't break off and stick to the paper. The other thing that could happen is that you damage the fibres of the paper so much by your rubbing that it tears and weakens the paper, wrecking the paper itself. 
So this might even cause a hole in fact. So once again you're ruining the piece, making it unusable. You can't work in that area again and the entire piece might be lost. So hopefully that helps you to understand that if you keep a handle on how you use your rubber then you can keep a handle on how good your work looks. So that's all for this video. Now I know this may not have been the art lesson that you were expecting but as I said understanding your materials is so very key to using them well. Keep these facts I've told you in mind as you work and as you erase. You may find that you're using your materials in a much more successful and productive way and that your work is looking a lot neater and a lot more like what you want it to look like. So I hope this was clear but if you have any questions on this topic or any other topic please leave them in the comments below and keep an eye out for the next video. Also don't forget to check out our video on GCSE art equipment. In that video we look at the equipment that will be very useful to those who are considering taking GCSE next year or are already taking it. It will be extremely useful and will give you that step ahead of the rest when you're starting your GCSE. So that's all for now. Be sure to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you in the next one.